Imagine if you can live where you want to live, do what you want to do, and spend time with people that you love the most. Maybe it's about getting the next job promotion, getting the next big sale, or spending time with someone you love, finding that true love in your life. Now raise your hand if you want to experience this next positive, life-changing opportunity. Of course, me too. But it's not easy. When I was growing up, I tried many different things. I played many different sports, from baseball to basketball to ping pong, only to get humiliated by my friends. I competed in a local blockbuster video game competition only to finish sixth place and nowhere close to becoming a champion. In high school, I competed in a math and science trivia competition. My team and I made it to the big lights. Then my brain froze up. I let my team down and finished fourth place. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, how did I even get the idea that I could become a champion? One day, when I was studying for UC Berkeley's civil engineering, I saw a poster for a school talent show at the Clark Kerr dormitories. I figured, why not? There's nothing to lose. And I sang my favorite song, She Bangs by Ricky Martin. I had no expectations, but to my great surprise, I won! The grand prize was... A DVD player! That gave me the confidence to try out for American Idol. A few nights later, I heard on Fox News that American Idol auditions would be coming over to San Francisco. I knew I wanted to audition, but I couldn't tell anyone especially my Asian parents. Could you guess why? What did you think my Asian parents want me to be? A doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, anything but an entertainer. Fortunately, the solution was simple. Shh, don't tell them. Don't tell my parents. Don't let them know. I secretly went to audition in front of 3,000 other people at a huge baseball park. I was thinking to myself, I had no chance at all. As I was waiting in line, I saw how hundreds of people only got 15 to 30 seconds to sing before they were told to go home. But somehow, they let me sing over, the min over a minute and they let me through. They told me to come back the next day. The next day, I did the same thing for the producers and they let me through again. By the time I got to see Randy, Paula, and Simon, there's only about 100 people left. Now, you might have witnessed my experience from the comfort of your own living room, whether it's on TV or the internet. The three judges were Randy Jackson. What's up, dog? That was cool, dog. Paula Abdul, you look beautiful tonight. And Simon Cow, that was the worst thing I ever heard. Seriously, I didn't know what to expect from this audition. As soon as I began my audition, Randy held a white sheet of paper to cough up his face and giggled throughout the entire audition. Paula was smiling and enjoying herself but Simon was frowning. I kept trying to entertain them. She bangs, she bangs. Oh baby, when she moves, she moves. I go crazy. But Simon stopped me at the middle of my chorus and said, thank you, thank you. You can't sing, you can't dance. So what are I going to say? I already gave my best. I have no regrets at all. Paula said, good for you. That's the best attitude yet. I said, I had no professional training 
And Simon goes, now this is a surprise of the century. Oh well, I thought that was the end of the road and my life returned to normal. Suddenly, four months later, I saw myself on TV again. Right after the night Fox broadcasted my audition, I got hundreds of emails for performance and interview opportunities. Unfortunately, on that same night, Fox News anchor John Beard said, William Hung is the worst singer ever. Imagine if you are told that you're the worst performer ever, the worst entrepreneur, the worst employee. How would you find the motivation to get up the next day? How do you give, give it your best? I had a hard time. The next day, I just kept my head down, tried to pretend nothing happened. And then, towards the end of one of my civil engineering classes, my professor decided to show my audition in front of hundreds of students. <laughs> and the students were like, oh my God, I saw this guy last night. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, we got to get to him. At the end of the class, I was mobbed for pictures and autographs. And from that day forward, my life can never be normal again. But I still wasn't sure if that would create an entertainment career. One day, I was invited to perform at a UC Berkeley's men's volleyball game. Right after my performance, one of the staff members from Koch Records briskly walked up to me and gave me a $25,000 check for a record contract. Could you believe it? Now, I know what you're thinking. How hard can this be? Take the money, fool! But for me, it wasn't easy at all. You see, I was aware that I was made the laughing stock for Asians, an American idol. In my heart, I felt like there were magnetic forces pulling me in different directions. But these forces gradually disappeared when I realized that perhaps I have the power to bring smiles to people's faces. I know I won't please everyone, but perhaps I have the power to bring joy to people through entertainment. And then I remember one of my friends from Berkeley said, if you don't take this opportunity, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. I don't want to regret for the rest of my life. <laughs> He's right. So I went for it. So I traveled and performed everywhere, and I recorded my first album. And somehow, my first album, Inspiration, became the number one independent on album on billboards. It sold over 200,000 copies. I definitely thought I was the luckiest guy in the world. But if I gave up on myself, that would have never happened. Looking back at all these experiences, I know that my success cannot be happening by chance alone. I believe there are three keys you need to become a champion. And the first one is communication. Let's think about my reaction. I said I already gave my best, I have no regrets. It came from my heart. It wasn't scripted. And at the time, what people told me was, many people, when they don't make it to Hollywood, they would get angry, upset, and a few people would even throw a water bottle at Simon Cow. But I didn't see the need to do that. That's not me. I just wanted to respond positively. And people ask me, how you get that idea? And perhaps one of the things was my mom taught me it's okay to fail as long as you tried your best. That's where it came from. And that's what happened. So you could communicate with empathy. And there's been a lot of 
people, speakers before us, talking about empathy. And that's what that means. To me, it means that you, we under, I understand that those judges were just playing their roles. They're not attacking me. It's not personal. And the second one is context, the big picture. To me, one of my key values is freedom. And the freedom is the ability for us to make choices to improve ourselves each and every day. I look back at this experience and I realize I had a very difficult choice because there was a lot of criticism against me. But then I told myself, I had a choice. Do I want to live my life with courage or do I want to hide myself in fear and hope that people will forget about me? But hiding in fear? What a terrible way to live. And that's why I chose to take the high road, despite the risk, despite the criticism. And finally, the last part is connections. And it comes back to communication and context, because it's hard to have genuine connections without communication and context. And I'm very grateful for all the friends, mentors, and coaches that supported me for all these years. And for you, think about how you can be truly successful. For me, I see myself, no one can succeed alone. Even for myself, it doesn't work that way. So I'm very grateful, and, and you can be too. And it's like, you could build those connections. Just reach out to people, genuinely care about them. And there you have it, the three keys to becoming a champion. Communication, context, and connections. It's been 14 years since my American Idol audition. And recently, my dream to meet Ricky Martin finally came true. One of my friends heard on radio that Ricky Martin wanted to bring me over to Las Vegas on the Valentine's morning show on FM 104.3. I was surprised, like, wow, you've been mentioning me three or four times in the past, but this time it was real because I reached out to the radio station and then they connected me with Ricky Martin's manager. It's like, oh my God. So I finally performed with him last Saturday, June 2nd, 2018. The day that I would never forget. <laughs> As you can see, the choice is yours. So choose to become a champion and change your destiny starting today. Thank you.